everyone and welcome to this episode of me um, making landscape studies just to ease in to watercolor because I'm still practicing. Um, I have more of an acrylic, maybe even oil background, um, but watercolor has been one of those things that I struggle with a little bit along with gouache. And um, I would like to share with you some ways I make my life a bit easier because um, what gives me the authority to do this? Nothing actually. Like I'm no one in the watercolor world, but I'm a beginner and I think that has its merits and I do have some things to say because I believe that when you want simple solutions to problems that beginners face, it's sometimes a bit disheartening to ask a professional because if I had a problem with 2 plus 2 equals 4, I probably wouldn't go to Albert Einstein to explain that to me because it's so normal and easy and natural to him that he probably wouldn't know how to explain something this simple to me. And so um, I think talking to other beginners can sometimes be as helpful as watching the pros do it the right way, but not as disheartening <laughs> because when you watch the pros, everything seems so easy and you wonder how on earth will I get there? Because um, what happens a lot is that you will read about watercolor and uh, people will say things like, it's the hardest medium to paint in and um, it's, it takes years and years to master it. And the reasons are that um, watercolor is uh, so transparent and non-opaque that you get one chance and if you make a mistake, there's no way to fix it. Or as in opaque colors or paints um, as acrylics and oils, you can cover things up and you can fix your mistakes that way. The other reason why it's so intimidating is that um, it does what it wants a little bit, like the water still moves on its own on the page. You don't just put a stroke down and it stays the way it is. Um, the color also changes from wet to dry. And uh, most importantly, you have to work from light to dark because your white is basically the white of the page. Or at least if you want to um, paint professionally with watercolor, your white should be the white of the page. Um, if you want to do it properly, quote unquote properly. Um, but there are some ways to work around that. And normally you would have to do a lot of planning to preserve the white that you have. And of course, it's a lot easier to just cover up and use white on top of other things and build your um, painting from the darks to the lights as you are used to from acrylic or oil. Um, and so this is kind of uh, my way of finding a compromise and um, keeping myself from being too distracted and using some of the techniques that I had with acrylic and oil and still producing something um, that has some value um, in learning and improving for myself. So my tips for you are, first of all, don't try to be photorealistic. Um, you have to be somewhat something of an impressionist, especially when you do landscapes with watercolor. You cannot draw each leaf, I mean that goes for oil as well, um, each leaf on a tree as you see it. You have to think in shapes and then be creative how to create those shapes. Um, find way to create ways to create structure without going to too much detail. Now in this case I am mainly using a, quite a large brush because I'm trying to train myself to use large brushes and bolder movements because I am very um, a detail-loving person when I when I paint, not in any other aspect of life. <laughs> um, but you can use tissue paper, you can use sponges, you can use all sorts of tools to help you achieve um, textures without going into hours and hours of work. The second point is try to use a drier brush. 
Now I have to add that in my case here, I am actually giving myself a bit of a challenge by using hot press watercolor paper. And that's very smooth. The paint tends to form puddles on top of the surface. So you have to use even less water, but regardless, try to tap your brush on a sponge or tissue to get rid of most of the moisture before you get it on paper and you will get completely different results that won't flow as much as paint mixed with a lot of water. Try to use cold press if you're a beginner, if you don't want to run into as many problems as I have here. Don't be afraid to layer. I know that most watercolorists will maybe do a glaze here and there, but layering is not really something you do in watercolor. You're trying to avoid that um, muddiness and you're trying to keep everything so loose and so light that the paper shines through and give that very distinctive watercolor appearance. But when you're transitioning from acrylic and oil to watercolor, I would say why not layer a little bit? Because um, there are artists who layer watercolor a lot. There's, there's not just this one way of working with it. You lose some of that characteristic look. It's true, but it doesn't mean that it's bad. So if you're coming from oil and you're used to making like 16 layers, maybe when you're using watercolor, you can do three layers at least. So it's not as um, built up as an oil painting, but still helping you. Because the thing is, it's really easy for professionals to say, um, you're not supposed to use that many layers, you're supposed to get it right the first time, but when you're not at that skill level yet, as I am, I just don't know how to do it. I would love to finish my watercolor uh, painting in a few strokes and um, 10 minutes and have everything looking right, but for me it just doesn't work that way and so I'm forced to use layers to bring out some details and things like that. And I believe that if I keep practicing this and keep this in mind, then I will be able to reduce those layers over time. But good things just take time. And why make my life hard <laughs> if um, it ruins all the fun for me? I'd rather um, have a compromise between opaque and non-opaque paints and see what happens and then try to tweak that and improve every time. Now, I have talked about um, preserving the white on your page. Um, like I said, that requires a lot of planning. It requires the use of masking fluid in some cases, but that will give you a very hard edge, with not, which not everybody um, will like or enjoy. So there are workarounds for this and I will talk about creating highlights in watercolor in a different episode because there are quite a few ways to do that. But in my case here, I simply used an opaque paint. It's a very simple little tube of opaque white that comes with um, very simple school watercolor and it was not as opaque as my gouache which I use in, at the very, very end of this video, but it did help me lighten up some of the areas that were too dark for me and add just a few highlights. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, you can see in the foreground, I have a few spots of white here. I think that's okay until I learn to use the white of my paper to my advantage a bit more. Now, as for landscapes, there are some things that you can exaggerate and some things that you can tone down. In general, I did not go, do a very good job here at um, simplifying things because I picked a very complex landscape with a lot of rock formations and a lot of little grass hills and plants and things like that and a lot of movement in the water as well. Um, since I layered so much, I was able to work around that, but if I wanted to do a really quick um, very loose watercolor, I would have had to simplify this a lot. Also, you can exaggerate some parts, like you will see at the end of the video, I will exaggerate some of the movement in the water just to 
um, bring forth that energy that it has. You can also see that now I'm darkening the rocks in the background quite a bit because I realized at some point that my values were off and that can happen when um, you paint something that has quite a few colors and the colors themselves contrast very well on your photo and thus create distinction but when you're using your watercolor it all just turns to mush and there is no real um, contrast between light and dark and that's when I realized that all my green grass had to go a little bit uh, darker as well as the rocks in the background so that the water in the front can really shine and be the brightest part of the painting except for the sky of course and what helps to figure out your values is to squint a little bit like close your eyes a little bit and squint so that uh, what you see is a little bit blurry and you will be able to tell light and dark a bit better um, if you want to <laughs> take it to the next level you could take your um, phone maybe take a picture and turn that to black and white or just turn down the saturation and then you will see if there is enough distinctions between your grays and if you have to darken or lighten any parts of your painting. You can use a fan brush for grass as I'm doing here. Make sure that it's quite dry because um, you don't want that to flow and go anywhere. You really want that crispness. And I'm also using my opaque paint here. Um, and you can use anything you have at home actually to create um, texture. I am also doing some splatters here for the flowers. Just be creative with it. Also remember that it's okay for your brush strokes to show. Sometimes we think that watercolor is all flowy and it has a lot of gradients and everything each color will flow into the next but that's not always the case some of really really good um, watercolor paintings actually um, have very visible brush strokes so don't be afraid of that choose a simple subject matter if you can but most of all choose something that you will enjoy a lot of um, tutorials or books for beginners will have very simple um, painting subjects and that's totally fine and I get the idea behind it but if you don't like it you most likely will not paint it in the first place so paint something that you enjoy and if it's a little bit more complex then give yourself the challenge and try to reflect on what you could have done better and how uh, you could simplify everything the next time that's about all the tips I have for you today I hope they were helpful to you. I hope you don't give yourself a hard time with watercolor. Like I said, it takes time. Give yourself that time and enjoy the process. And if you're worrying about my hand, I have a little bit of, I think it's tendonitis, but it's not from drawing and painting. Um, it's from other things I did around the house. And um, that's why I'm trying to cool my wrist and uh, keep a bandage around it just to keep the pressure off a little bit. But if you have an injury, please don't be like me. Try to give your hand a little bit of rest and um, let it heal well before you start working again. Or you will probably have to deal with it for a much longer time. That being said, um, take care of yourselves and have a lot of fun with your art. And I'll see you next Friday in my next episode. Bye! Thanks for watching!